International Trade Focus is brought to you by Goyle and Agricultural Development Bank. Coming up on International Trade Focus. We shall take a look at the trade facilitation role the UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce, UKGCC, plays in ensuring fruitful Ghana-UK bilateral trade relations. Total trade in goods and services exports plus imports between the UK and Ghana was £2.2 billion in the four quarters of the end of quarter 4, 2022, an increase of 53.6% in current prices from the four quarters to the end of quarter 4, 2021. Now, with these volumes and these figures, one cannot underestimate the importance of putting the right measures in place as a country to enhance trade relations between Ghana and the UK. The UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce is a member-based trade association that facilitates and promotes bilateral trade relations between Ghana and the UK. On today's episode, we are taking a look at the role that they play in ensuring continuous and fruitful bilateral trade relations between Ghana and the UK. My name is Anna Spio and this is International Trade Figures. International Trade Figures is brought to you by Gold, Good Energy, ADB, Truly, Agric and more. Public Elegance and Pediasi Valley Resort. Right, so imagine it getting out there. So as the UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce, um, how do you sort of disseminate information like that so that it will reach more people to be able to take advantage of this? Yes, so we have a lot of channels. Uh, typical, our usual channels are through our emails, our newsletters. Um, we have an email list where we broadcast such information all the time. But also we make sure that our interactions, our interactions with other business groups, our members, um, institutions, schools, we're able to tell them that, look, this is something which is there. And thankfully, it is not very difficult to understand because before the UK, before this UK-Ghana Interim Trade Partnership Agreement, there was the EU one that the UK was part of. So it's sort of like just mirrors the EU one and adds other better thing, add other things to it as well. So it's not very difficult. Most Ghanaians know about the EU one. So it's not very you know difficult to to get it, to to understand. So we are pushing for more angles. Um, anytime we have a meeting, um, stakeholder meeting, we, we talk to them to try and then you know take time to just explore the opportunities in, in the agreement. Right. So um, in recent times, we can't have any conversation without bringing in the COVID-19 pandemic and its impact on businesses, right? So um, how do you think that, um, let's say post-COVID, if I can say that, post-COVID, the World Health Organization is saying COVID is no longer a life-threatening right. <laughs> situation. So we can say post-COVID. So how do you think business have, um, businesses have adapted um, post-COVID? Is their growth, are they uh, recovering at a faster rate or at a slow rate? What do you think? Businesses are really recovering at a faster rate um, because back then everybody was believed in brick and mortar. But COVID has just brought, I mean, it's been, a, we've seen some disruptions and which have been positive. Even with formal organizations that switched or that were doing, um, during lockdown, we're all supposed to work, you know, remotely. Most organizations have even stuck to the, you know, they have a sort of hybrid to have a both work from home and then come to work scheme, which a lot of employees, when you speak with employees, say that it has given them um, better mental health, better well-being, balanced, you know, well-being, balanced life and all that. And it is contributing positively. So you realize that teams are now becoming more effective. You know, teams are getting to be agile because the work from home, you know, spared businesses to think of agility. So suddenly we are seeing some productivity, some effectiveness, effectiveness of operations, um, efficiency of operations, yes. And this is really helping 
look at the online sales, for instance. It's, there's a boom. Lots of businesses um, that either to couldn't afford the typical shop or brick and mortar space are delivering goods and services, you know, online. So there's reduced cost of, you know, um, operate, operating and it's actually helping the, the, the um, bottom line. So things are picking up really fast. And of course, so COVID also helped businesses to sort of like pause. It forced businesses to pause to really see what was important in their business cycles and improve on it. So you realize that it's also helping. At the end of the day, it has really helped businesses a lot. Um, all inefficiencies in the system have all been, you know, taken out because then COVID got, gave us the chance to actually look and see and look at what is important and what not. So it's, it's really, businesses are really um, picking up, yes, but at a better, you know, pace. Um, they are becoming more innovative. They are thinking more outside the box now, yes. I think I agree with you. <laughs> now, let's move to the African continental free trade area. Um, trading has officially um, commenced. I mean, there is so much to be done, but at least trading has commenced. So, um, in your opinion, how can businesses, Ghanaian businesses especially, um, position themselves in order to um, harness the full benefits of the continental free trade area? The first thing I believe most businesses must do um, because you're looking at Africa, so you, they must start looking for business partnerships. Before then, there weren't many business partnerships, intra-Africa business partnerships. So there's the opportunity to now grow that area. This is the time to, to, to see whether to look at your suppliers and see whether you can actually source materials from Africa. I recently found out that um, some shoe making factories in Ghana are thinking about connecting with um, suppliers of leather from Africa, you know, from East Africa, um, Eastern, Southeastern part of Africa. And that's fantastic. Either to the way importing from Europe. So this is something, so businesses need to start looking for suppliers in Africa. Um, before Africa Continental Free Trade, it was a no-go, you know, thought to even do that. So this is the time to build business networks. And this is where the UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce, even though we promote bilateral trade between Ghana and the UK, this is something we do very well because we have networks all across Africa. So everywhere in Africa, you, or even the world, you find a British chamber or a UK chamber. We are all bound by one, um, one connecting, one, one big umbrella association. That helps us to even deal with each other like that, not between the UK, but within ourselves. So Ghana, South Africa, through the a British chamber in South Africa, Ghana, Kenya, Ghana, Nigeria, through a chamber like ours in Kenya or Nigeria. So we are able to help businesses to find new supplies within the Africa continent. So one, businesses must look for suppliers within the African continent. And then capacity building. And um, capacity building for quality, for even how to produce better. It, it, it's so crucial, you know. The African market is growing. It's, it's quite young, it's growing. But unfortunately, fortunately, we have this digital disruption happening now. So there are no excuses to say that, oh, we are in Africa, we don't have access to this. There are no excuses, no excuses at all. So then we need to build our capacities to be able to produce better goods, competitive goods. Um, if you're doing something, as in the quality, we must start looking thinking about quality of, of, of goods. You know, the same goods, the same things you're able to export to, the, to Europe or to the UK, to the US, the same standards. This is not the time to say that, oh, it's Africa, so you have to reduce your standard. This is the time to even improve better because then there are so many other competitors as well. You know, so capacity development for quality 
Um, businesses must start looking at their quality infrastructure to ensure that they'll be competitive. You, they must also be able to build their capacities to expand, you know, because the African market is quite big. It's in the billions. The, I mean, number of people that you could serve, the potential number of people is in the, is in the billions. So it means that you must scale up. If you're a small business, you're able to produce just uh, to a million people. You should be able to know that now you get a lot of people calling in. So you have to expand. You have to build your capacity to be able to produce, meet such high demand. So that's also one. Um, another thing is another thing is the even in, in terms of capacity to look at the you have to pause. Businesses must actually take their time to look at the agreement and to be able to see where the opportunities are. Again, the Chamber of Commerce can help you to do that. We'll be able to um, see, we'll be able to advise you which sectors will do well, which sectors you can, you can, you know, leverage and what you can leverage to, to, to expand and that sort of thing. So it's very, very important that you really look at the, the treaty or the agreement and to be able to, um, exp to be able to see what opportunities there are in there. Because most of the time, um, we have a rule book and we don't even bother to look into it to see, you know, everything <laughs> that would like help us. Just like terms and conditions. No one yes, no one reads. <laughs> you just check it. But it's very important. Yeah. It's um, quite new. But let's, businesses should try and get to know what it is in the agreement and how it will impact their work. I think it, it will be very, very important to do that. You're watching International Trade Focus and this is our in depth segment. On this week's in depth segment, we're having a discussion with the head of trade, UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce, Sarah Adlid Odamton. We're taking a look at the Ghana-UK bilateral trade relations and the facilitation role that the UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce plays. We'll be right back after this break. Breathtaking picturesque views. The essence of tranquility recrafted. What you desire? A romantic expedition, syndicate sessions, banquet and conferences, or a discreet weekend getaway? Just name it. It's exclusively packaged for you at Pediasi Valley Resort. A break, spacious rooms, ultra modern gym facilities, games, indoors, terrace and lawn restaurants and lounges, cozy private dining, and all the swimmers' paradise. Aquaba, any day, all year round, to Pediasi Valley Resort. The acts of serenity, skillfully served. Here's innovation from Goyle that takes you further. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 Lubes have been expertly crafted with the latest in liquid engineering technology, highly advanced for modern engines, prolongs oil change intervals, save you fuel, clean, protect and enhance engine performance. The way engines work has become complex and Goyle has innovated to stay ahead with expertly crafted lubricants that work excellently with all petrol and diesel engines of today. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 News. Innovation that takes you further. Goyle. Good energy. A warm welcome back. The conversation continues with the Head of Trade, UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce, Sarah Adlid Odamton. Right, so as businesses are scaling up, building their capacity, reading the rule book to know where they fit in, um, what role should government also play to ensure that um, at least businesses from Ghana are able to you know, gain some competitive advantage as we are trading with the UK, as we are trading with other African countries? Right, so... I would say for governments, I would say the first thing is the business environment. So you're looking at um, easy and affordable access to land, to power, to a skilled workforce. You're looking at the regulatory environment. It should be enabling. Once 
once the business environment is, is good, it, is, it helps businesses thrive in very good business environment. So for government, um, I believe or we believe as a chamber that government needs to do more in, in making the business environment more enabling, you know, um, for more businesses, for, for, for people to start thinking about, you know, innovations and all of that. Innovation brings, you know, the ideas that sort of like will, will, will set up a business. So we need that sort of environment to help um, and to, to help businesses already in the system and for new ones coming up to help them to innovate and be able to, you know, be productive. And, 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 and then another thing, and in terms of the regulatory environment, so the taxes, um, even, even, even rules about patency, intellectual property, and all of those things, it should be enabling to, to, to you know, give a boost to business. In, in, in Ghana. Another thing which would typically also fall under the business environment is access to credit. Um, considering that this is an Africa thing that needs to work. Africa, I believe every African wants the Africa continental free trade to work um, because of the enormous opportunities. So government should please help, you know, support the financial institutions. To, to be able to lend, to be able to give more credit to businesses. Because believe me, some other African countries don't have, um, a, don't have it quite challenging as, as, as Ghanaian businesses in, to access you know, credit. And this is quite, um, it, it, it puts Ghana behind you know, in terms of the competition. So access to credit, access to finance is very, very, very important that I think government should do something about, about, yes, as, 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 as their own, you know, commitment to supporting the Africa continental trade. Yeah. So how would you rate the enabling environment as far as business is concerned? On a scale of 1 to 10, how will you rate it? On a scale of 1 to 10, unfortunately, um, so we have, we, every year, we, we um, conduct a survey that we call business climate survey or business environment and competitiveness survey. Every year, the UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce conducts this and um, we share the reports with governments, with other key stakeholders, we share it with businesses for them to know what is truly happening, you know, what was going on. And this year's report, no, last year's report, which um, we're still using because um, this year's report, we've just launched the survey. Um, we'll be closing it by middle of July. So um, last year's report, um, I'll just speak in terms of, the, of last year's report. You're looking at five from one to ten. There's a lot that government needs to do, but um, the components of the business environment are quite complex. So you realize that um, government could be doing very well in terms of, or the business environment could be very good in terms of access to land, access to power. Let's take access to power, for instance. But then the regulatory environment is falling back. So it, it's not very easy to give a definite you know, this is where it, it is. We, we can't um, index it very much because the other components are also very important. And we can't rate one component more important than the other. So like I said, you could realize that this sector of the business environment component is really doing well, whereas this sector is not. It's actually falling, falling behind. But you would also know that most part of last year, we had some economic challenges. And so it sort of like affected every um, other component. So that's why I would say a careful five. A careful five. A careful five. <laughs> so that there's so much room for us to improve. Um, putting aside the challenges, you know, there's so much we can, we can do. 
In, in our discussions so far, standards have come up a lot. Um, so uh, finally, uh, what should Ghanaian businesses who want to export to the UK, what should they note, um, what should they equip themselves with as far as standards are concerned? The UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce organizes um, trade courses. Oh, so we, we run um, what we call um, rules of origin um, course training for it's open not only to our member I mean to the general public so exporters can take advantage um, of that it's it's um, join us it's I think it's been running on on our social media um, networks and this it's, it's a fantastic way to actually learn what it means to actually export to the UK you get to learn all the exporting documents you must have and which institutions must actually issue you with such you know needed certifications and all of that so one you need to equip yourself with knowledge you must know and understand the UK regulatory environment when it comes to you know border issues when it comes to exporting you must understand um, if you don't your goods could get there and they could be returned and by the time they are returned to you they could you know go bad and that sort of thing so that's one people must research you know research and and get to know what is required of them to do the other thing is to join um, the UK GCC's um, trade missions. We, we organize trade missions throughout the year. Um, this year we've been to two already. There are many more coming up in the rest of the year. It's a fantastic opportunity to actually visit clients, to actually visit um, suppliers, manufacturers, to visit key stakeholders, even government officials in the UK to understand you know, the requirements for exporting to the UK. So I'll entreat um, businesses, potential businesses, uh, businesses that want to start exporting to the UK to come see us, um, let us hold their hands, let's show them, you know, how to navigate the regulatory environment, you know, in terms of exporting to the UK. We also have, um, in our membership, we have seasoned exporters. So with our network, through our networking events, you can get to learn from other member companies that are already in, in the business of exports, yes, and import. So finally, how does a company get in touch with the UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce? Yes, so um, you can visit our website. We have a lot of information on our website. Um, it's www.ukgcc.com.gh. And... Um, you can reach us through there, or we also have our email address, quite easy, info at ukgcc.com.gh. Um, send us an email. Any of our team members will just pick it up and will quickly um, attend to you. We are also um, situated in the British High Commission in Accra, um, Julius Nyerere Street, just passed by. Um, well, you have to book an appointment first, and but our offices are open. We are open to, to you know meet you and then take you through the necessary um, enrollment um, process. We are also on social media. Once you connect to us on social media, drop us a message. We'll follow up. So long as you leave an email address, we'll follow up and then make sure get in touch with you and then make sure that um, we take you through our enrollment um, and process. And that was an insightful discussion with the head of Trade UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce, Sarah Adelaide Odamton. We took a look at Ghana-UK bilateral trade relations and the role that the UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce plays in trade facilitation between these two countries. And that does it for our in depth segment. News and events comes up shortly. Don't go away. Are you an importer or exporter? Do you need quick financing at the best rate on the market? ADB has good news for you. Walk into any agricultural development bank location nationwide for that solution to all your trade financing needs. ADB offers you pre-financing of exports and imports, 
post-shipment credit facilities, bank guarantees, the issuance and acceptance of letters of credit, documentary bills for collection, outward documentary collection. Enjoy free advisory services from our well-trained, dedicated trade officers. Exporters of agricultural products are encouraged to take advantage of this great service. For further inquiries, call us on 0302-210-210. ADB, making trade finance easy. ADB, truly a Greek and more. ADB. And it's a wrap for this week's edition of International Trade Pickers. Join us same time next week for some more on international trade related activities here in Ghana and beyond. International Trade Pickers is brought to you by Gold Good Energy, ADB, Truly, Agric, and more, Public Elegance, and Pediasi Valley Resort. My name is Anas Pio. Join us same time next week. Bye bye.